For us, precision medicine is important because it is testing us in new ways. So, uh, you know, Department of Energy's missions are underpinned by a need for computing. Uh, we have a huge appetite because we deal with problems that are hard to instrument, uh, hard to predict without stressing the fastest computers on earth. Uh, and so we're invested pretty heavily in computing as a tool to address a lot of our national missions. And precision medicine is an interesting place because as, as part of the partnerships we've created across our government, uh, we found uh, probably two years ago um, through a, an executive order in the former administration um, that there was a fairly uneven uh, application of high performance computing across federal agencies and that there were other agencies that could benefit from this. And, and so there was a push for an all of government approach to computing with the Department of Energy identified as one of the federal lead agencies. And we turned to our colleagues in the National Institutes of Health and the National Cancer Institute in particular uh, an organization we worked for, worked with before when we did the Human Genome Project, and looked to see if there were opportunities to advance their missions and advance technologies in computing. Their business is precision medicine. There was a precision medicine presidential initiative that had been launched about the same time we started looking into this. It made a lot of sense to understand whether we could both advance computing and precision medicine at the same time. The nice thing about precision medicine, it is a space full of data. It is something important to society, not just nationally but internationally. Uh, solutions there would certainly be welcome. And it, it'll take computing that is qualitatively different than what we have available today. It is data rich multimodal data, data in many different kinds of formats, historical data from health records, uh, image data, deep in detail, many layers of, of MRI data or brain scans, collections of, of uh, environmental data and other factors, and trying to understand how you make predictions in that space has been pulling us into trying to converge artificial intelligence and cognitive functionality with what traditionally has been high performance computing. So for us, it is an accelerator in advancing our path down to this technology convergence, which we know is coming, uh, which we think we can be better prepared for as we uh, move into the future. It'll be important for our missions, but we found at least a nexus of interests that draws in other entities other agencies, other governments, uh, private sector equities, uh, because many people have become interested in this area. So it buys down risk and technology and it produces a better outcome. So we like it for many reasons, but uh, fundamentally it is an advancement of technology for us through this convergence of, of um, machine learning or AI uh, with traditional prediction in HPC and analytics. So markets, you know, that's a little bit uh, harder to say. Uh, you know, I can talk about our missions. We see supercomputing in many places, but it isn't necessarily the same kind of supercomputing we do at the department. Um, you know, uh, racks of servers are, are not exactly the same because we care about the interconnect. We will take uh, some of the world's fastest machines and we will dedicate them to running a single code uh, sometimes for up to a year or maybe even two years from initial time to the final time of the simulation uh, because we need to know what that uh, situation means. And so we will put demands on uh, computers in ways that you don't typically find in the commercial space where quarterly profits and quarterly measures are more of the metric uh, for uh, how you spend your resources. Uh, so. I think our application space, what we traditionally call or continue to call high performance computing is, is probably not exactly the same as um, you know, what companies do. Uh, we have looked for ways to partner with the uh, private sector to try and 
share our best practices, share our equipment, uh, share our, our capabilities and tools um, uh, to help uh, in, in advancing their type of competitive edge in, in the business sectors they're in. Um, but so in, in partnership with the private sector, it's a little bit harder uh, because we're not looking to be a cloud provider either. Uh, we have the cloud for that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I talked about our unique needs, I think, stand alone. There aren't too many others that need to do what we do uh, because of the kind of work we do. In partnering with the private sector, we, uh, it's, it's hit or miss. It is uh, sometimes hard. There are companies that know how to do this, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the tire companies, for example, just to pick one uh, at random, our, our advancing tire design over the years, um, uh, increasingly now virtually. Uh, we've seen it in a number of different industries. Oil, of course, has been doing this for years. Uh, oil companies are fairly good at, uh, at this, and there have been notable successes. I think uh, the, the huge discovery in the Gulf of Mexico was uh, a massive petascale type of effort uh, it was uh, uh, an inverse problem of, of reconstructing an image, and it took a large-scale simulation, but it helped, uh, I think it was Chevron, uh, discover a, a, an oil field. They had imaged, but didn't have the computing power to, to understand how to look through a mile of salt or two miles, I don't remember. It was a, a record calculation for them. Uh, but uh, so there are places where Companies have stressed HPC, but I, I still don't see too much of it in the cloud. I don't think there are many people who have the skills to create scalable codes uh, that work on the largest architectures. Uh, and so it's a pretty high entry point uh, because if you want to enter the business, you need such a large cast of experts. Uh, and for smaller companies, that's hard to do. I think. As it becomes easier, we'll have more people going in there, more companies. It'll, it'll grow out of necessity because that's where you'll need to get the competitive edge. But in terms of tools that are available, it is still a hard place to enter. Is there a race? Maybe. Uh, I, I think it's good. Uh, you know, again, why do we do computing? It's a tool. It's a tool for us to solve problems. Right now, we have more problems than we have solutions. You know, everyone's probably got their top five list of things they worry about, probably things uh, more immediate to them, but as you get down the list, uh, there are things that are probably far more cross-cutting. And, um, and, and as we look at how to solve those problems, enduring problems uh, related to our security and, and protecting our bank say, you know, statements or, or online transactions or, or um, again, the energy sector, making sure the power stays on uh, against uh, you know, natural or, or man-made uh, events or, or security in different forms. Pick your problem. There, there are many of these problems uh, from climate to, to just about anything that we worry about that we don't know the answers. Uh, and I think supercomputing will be an essential tool in trying to help answer those. I am happy that there are more and more people, and if it's a race, that's great because that means many people are, are exerting significant energy to advance the field. Uh, the field has not penetrated all sectors, um, and, and so it's, not, uh, it's still a niche area. But the more people we have doing this internationally, uh, the more we'll be able to apply this to the problems that we ultimately care about. Uh, you know, it's, it's not about who has a, a, a big supercomputer, if yours is in the top five or top 10 or top 100. It's, it's what are the problems you're solving and do they make a difference? Because again, this is a tool. It's like building a hammer. You know, who has the nicest hammer? It, it doesn't matter, you know, are you building a house? Are you, what are you building? Is that the right tool for the job you have? And so we think about the, the computers as instruments with a purpose, but it's driven by the purpose. And I think uh, 
Races are good in the sense that uh, it can energize and mobilize people to be create, creative, uh, to take risks in technologies and ideas and applications, and that's a place where we're all going to learn. So you, you mentioned the $250 million. This is a place that uh, we invested money with the private sector to buy down risk um, in next generation technologies. We, we would love to simply buy commercial. Uh, it would be more cost effective for us. We'd run in the cloud if that was the answer for us, if that was the most cost effective way, because it's not about the computer, it's about the outcomes. And, and so uh, we, we certainly, you know, we, we spent the $250 million and, and that was just a piece of, of ongoing and much larger investments we're making to try and steer on the, you know, on the sides uh, vendor roadmaps. Uh, we have a sense where companies are going, they share with us their technology investments, and we ask them if there are things they could, you know, we could build on those to help modify it so uh, they can be more broadly uh, serviceable to, uh, uh, you know, large scalable architectures. So $250 million is, is not a lot of money in the computer world. Uh, billion dollars is not too, you know, a lot of money in the computer world. So you have to have measured expectations on what you think you can actually impact. We, we look at impacting the high end, next generation roadmaps of companies where we can uh, to have the best output. It, it, the best outcome for us is we invest in, in modifications, lower power processors, memory closer to processor, AI injected into the, the CPUs in some way. And in the best case, it becomes commercial. And there's a market for it, a global market ideally, because then the price point comes down and when we build something there, it's more cost effective for us. So we're trying to avoid buying special purpose, single use systems because they're too expensive and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So if we can piggyback on where companies want to go by having a sense of what might ultimately have market value for them, uh, we, we leverage a lot of their R&D and production uh, for our value as well. So uh, yes, a race is good. Uh, this investment we're doing buys down risk. Uh, if other people did it for us, that would even be better. Uh, if they felt the urgency and, and invested in the areas that we care about, uh, we'd be really happy. Um, so we fill in the gaps where we can. We partner with other countries where we can. Uh, but ultimately, it's not about the computer. Uh, it's, it's really about uh, the purpose that we're trying to do. Well, so I, I think you would have to look. I, I wouldn't cast it in the same way as, as a Cold War arms race first. Uh, you know, it, big difference here first is, is the market in the U.S., the equities who are interested in this are, are small and large companies, uh, the collections of federal programs, universities. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it, it is kind of a, a pockets of innovation that are happening in different places. Uh, but it's not a collective investment. It isn't, it isn't a, uh, a kind of singular national investment uh, that we are making. Um, so, uh, sure, Intel probably is worried about that. They worry about market share, as any company does, uh, European companies probably, or any company. Uh, you know, for, for businesses, market share is important. I, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. But, uh, you know, it's, it's individuals, it's companies uh, who are looking to out-innovate each other. And, and competition in fields like this is, in general, good for everybody. Um, so I think there's something fundamentally different in, in, uh, in this. Uh, China has put in a lot of uh, national money, uh, quite a significant one, because I, I believe they've recognized the value to them, uh, certainly indigenous value and, and international value, and it's not a surprise. I think uh, the EU is also doing similar things. Uh, and so as nations 
and organizations start to recognize the value, they, they act accordingly. Um, so, you know, I like the competition. There are a lot more ideas out there because everyone is worried about what everyone else is doing. And, and so we have more options. Consumers will have more options uh, because a lot more people will be taking risk. I, I think it's a, you know, Chinese innovation or U.S. innovation or European innovation uh, to deliver things. I, I think people don't always open up everything they buy and make sure they know where it's made. They, you know, when you buy your iPhone, uh, do you care? You know, you want to know that it does what you want it to do. And so there is plenty of room for innovation. Uh, and, and I think uh, leadership will be uh, forged by those who have the best ideas that are uh, timed right and, and priced right uh, in, in this space. And, uh, you know, I've got nothing to complain about that. I think if, if you have the best ideas, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think people ultimately won't care. Uh, they'll just want to know when they can get it. So, you know, there are different levels to, to appreciate the problem. If we have, if you have 10 more options for something, you're probably happier. And if the price comes down, you're probably happier because there are different offerings com uh, competing against each other. If there's only one thing you can buy and the price is fixed, uh, you know, you're probably a little uh, less happy. So, you know, again, it, it goes back to, to computing uh, as a tool. It's, it's a tool for something. We worry about it to solve problems. And I still would argue we have more problems than solutions. And the more people we have actively working in this space, uh, to tackle, you know, this world's largest problems, I think the happier we're all going to be. I, I think it, it is easy to get caught up in, in the need of having a computer in the top three or five or, or whatever, pick your number, and um, because let's say I gave you uh, you know, a, a 10 exaflop system today and you found a big facility and you parked it there. Uh, and then it started, uh, you know, sucking up power and then and, and, and resources. And then the question, well, are you better off? You know, what's it for? What are you going to do on it? You know, the machine itself is nothing to, uh, you know, for some you it's nice to look at it. But when you walk into machine rooms, they all look the same. They're all loud. Uh, they all have raised floors, they all have cooling in some, some way, either liquid or air, and uh, they, they look about the same. Some people color the machines different or, or uh, put labels, but, you know, they're, they're all about the same, one machine room uh, to another. And the uh, uh, question is, what's it for? You know, and, and so if, if you want to have a machine in the top three or five, you know, why? Because we typically use other people's money to build these things. And, and you have to be sensitive to the fact that uh, this has to provide value to them. And so to answer your question, uh, are you catching up? Well, are there problems that you need to solve where HPC is going to help you? You know, and, and so you try and answer the question that way. If, if it's about the innovation piece that is tied to the technology, you know, because capturing intellectual property as you're developing uh, the, the hardware and software pieces of large systems uh, is, is important. There's an ecosystem, but it doesn't require you to make these massively parallel, large, heterogeneous uh, supercomputers, uh, which are fairly niche in their applications. So you can be engaged in, in creating these kind of innovative ecosystems for probably the large workload that exists out there that doesn't require the world's fastest supercomputers. You know, the day-to-day -day operations and modernization of, 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 of uh, factories and manufacturing, uh, integration with uh, additive manufacturing or, or, or gene editing or wherever the, the convergence of technologies is going to come uh, in cybersecurity and so on, you don't need the large scale for that. And, and so when you try and answer that question, and I don't want to do it for the, 
EU, that's an you know, EU uh, question to answer. It's really, um, you know, what is the goal? Because having a big machine and standing in and admiring it uh, doesn't buy you anything except a large bill uh, that lasts for many years because these machines last uh, four or five years, uh, not because they, they suddenly break, uh, but largely because the cost to maintain them uh, exceeds the cost of buying a faster next generation system. And so if you buy a big system and the annual cost in four or five years time just to keep it running is bigger than having a brand new system that's five times more powerful or you know something like that, well you might say it's time to retire it and I will get another system that is faster. Um, and, and so you know once you enter this business it's not just one machine. It's, it's an it's a enduring mortgage of commitment that you need. So you have to understand the purpose well. Who's the machine for? Who's it serving? Do you need it that big? If, if you have a lot of distributed use, uh, maybe the answer is that. Uh, the cloud at the time, uh, you know, some years ago, uh, well, the cloud recently, even still, doesn't have a lot of HPC in it. It will at some point. I know Azure uh, has some, uh, but still not at our scale. Um, and, but it, it has a lot and the question is that enough, you know, and so comparing cost models for what you're actually trying to accomplish is, is probably important too. So, you know, one has to step back and, and say what's it for. Uh, there could be certainly economic value of being in the business. Uh, it might not drive you to the largest scale. It could be the marquee value of being able to say, well, we're number one, we're number five, or, or whatever, but that is fairly ephemeral. It passes fairly quickly, and then, uh, you know, then what? Um, so ask yourself the hard questions first. Why do we need it? What's it for? Uh, am I deriving value that it exceeds how much I'm going to put into this? So, you know, how do you quantify that? What is your return on investment? as you try and justify spending other people's money again on the next generation systems. I think that's all kind of prudent use of, uh, of taxpayer money uh, as you think about these systems because, you know, in my experience, these things are very expensive. Um, and, and don't just step into it just to, to have it uh, because I think you, you might end up being disappointed. So for the EU, there, there are lots of problems in technology. I don't know if there are some at, at the exascale scale uh, that you can always find applications at, at any scale, let me say it that way. <coughs> Question is, is the return on investment the right kind of return to justify the kinds of things that you want? And then that answers the question, I would say. At least that would be my, my personal way I would look at it uh, if I were sitting in the EU and asking those questions. Maybe there are, uh, there are different kinds of entry points if, if you're cultivating expertise who are learning about heterogeneous or scalable architectures and software and, and AI and so on. Being attached to it because of the, the race, you know, can be uh, exciting uh, and, and getting that kind of expertise can be lots of derivative value of cultivating uh, uh, scientists here locally who would have that kind of knowledge and could apply it. You, you might not need an exascale or, or you know, a 10 exaflop system uh, to, uh, to benefit from that. I think you might be able to benefit from it at many different scales. And so, uh, you know, I, I would say that being aware and engaged and, and getting scientists to feel part of it is probably a useful thing. Um, whether you want to commit to building one yourself and housing it here, well, that's an entirely different uh, issue. Uh, but there is certainly intellectual value of being in a field which is developing rapidly like this.